Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 27th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Frankfurt, Germany. Just a quick update on the Apache Struts vulnerability that I talked about on Friday. There is now on GitHub a public available exploit for this vulnerability. So if you still have any unpatched systems out there, any systems where you didn't mitigate this vulnerability well using some form of web application firewall or whatever, don't just blindly patch these systems at this point, but go over them with a fine comb trying to figure out if they haven't already been exploited yet. And Xavier took a look at some malware that was delivered as a malicious publisher file. Yes, Microsoft Publisher hasn't really been used much lately, I believe, but apparently it's still part of the default install in many Office setups. It is, for example, part of the Office 365 Business Premium setup, which a lot of businesses subscribe to. And if you select to install the respective applications on your system, then Publisher will be installed as well. And of course, these dot pub files will automatically be opened by publisher. Probably the goal here is to evade some basic blacklisting techniques where you're only looking for macros and the like in Word or Excel documents and never really bothered to also inspect publisher documents. So Xavier in his post will explain how to analyze this kind of malware and a reader actually left a comment telling you how to add .pub files to the exchange online protection. Well, and if you never heard of Publisher, then you probably also have never really heard of AT commands. In the good old dial-up modem days, you tended to use AT commands, which is short for attention, and it's really just the letters A and T to send commands to a modem, for example, to reset the modem, to dial, or to set various modes and speeds on the modem. As so many useful old things, AT commands actually never really went away, turns out. Even modern smartphones still understand these AT commands, and researchers at the University of Florida looked at 2,000 different Android firmware images, and they found more than 3,500 AT commands embedded in these firmware images. Pretty much all of them have not been documented what they actually do. So for a smartphone, if you connect your smartphone via USB to a computer, the smartphone could be used as a modem and the computer can then send AT commands to the smartphone. But it turns out these AT commands can do much more than just dial numbers. So if you are connecting an Android phone to a computer via USB, there is a pop-up telling you, hey, do you actually you know, want to connect to this computer or do you just want to use it to charge the phone? Even without acknowledging the prompt, AT commands can be sent on some of these smartphones. And the AT commands can even be used to send touch events to the phone, which means the AT commands can be used to acknowledge this dialogue. So this pretty much disables any security there is from malicious USB hosts that you may be connecting to. Yet another reason not to connect to random USB outlets that you find or to use USB cables that you don't trust. A link to the page these researchers put up describing this vulnerability also have a database of all the different smartphone models that they experiment with and how much they're vulnerable to various exploit scenarios. And who would have thought that you can read the content of an LCD screen by listening to a microphone close to this particular screen? Of course, you may have heard some chirps or other noises emanating from your screen, but typically LCD screens appear to be quite silent. But apparently, well, that's not exactly true. And it appears that standard smartphone microphones are sensitive enough in 
order to pick up whatever noise is caused by these screens. Now, I'm not 100% convinced of the practicality of this particular exploit. In their paper, they demonstrate how they're able to recover screens with very specific test patterns like white and black lines that are sort of alternating from each other and the like. Sometimes specific patterns like this, yes, they do cause some audible signals emanating from the particular screen. I somewhat doubt that this is possible with, for example, detailed text or graphics. But of course, a neat possibility here would be that if you are talking to someone in particular on a video conference call or such, where using a microphone that's actually very close to the screen, that it may be possible to actually recover part of the screen content someone is looking at. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.